Thank you, Fox. Thank you for now making it to where we only have to spend a small fortune on tools instead of going completely broke in order to service your dropper posts. Hey folks, we are back again with another video and today we're going to be working on a Fox transfer dropper post. So the transfer first came out, I want to say it was 2017, then you had 18, 19, 20, and then in 2021, they did a big revamp, which stuck around for 22, 23, a well-needed and very well-deserved revamp. They were great posts, but the 17 to 20 were extremely expensive to service if you wanted to service them on your own. In fact, it did not make sense. You were better off just sending it into Fox, okay? Because you needed the better part of 700 bucks in tools, if not more, right? I haven't looked into it lately. Whereas in 2021 and on, they made it much simpler to service. You don't need to spend big money in tools. They give you the option to do it on your own. And that's what this video is gonna be about. A full service, we're gonna be changing all the O-rings, uh, oils, so on and so forth on this post and uh, putting it back together, okay? Can you do this on your own? Yeah, 2021 and on, definitely. Even the one previous to 2021, you could do on your own. But again, it was just the tools, man. They were just ridiculously expensive. It just wasn't worth you doing it, right? So with all that being said, let's get into the tools and the parts needed for the job. There's not that many custom tools, which is nice, right? So unlike the previous versions of the original Fox transfers, those had a lot of custom tools. So let's start off with opening up the post. To open up the post, we're gonna have to take out the collar. It is a 37 millimeter collar. Now you could use a Nipix, right, or a channel lock. Just make sure to protect the, the collar itself so you don't scuff it or scratch it, right? Now I have a 38 millimeter uh, crow's foot and I put a one millimeter wash it, washer on it. And I also put tape so I can protect the post so it doesn't scratch or scuff. Uh, and it essentially turned into a 37 millimeter. So that's gonna work great. And I need a ratchet for that. Right now we are gonna need magnets. There are three bearings, uh, one at the bottom of the post and two inside the inner post, the inner damper area, uh, the main cap at the bottom of the damper uh, that has two bearings that we need to be careful with that we're gonna have to remove and keep in a safe spot, right? And they're separate size bearings, I believe. I don't think the bottom one is the same. I'm not sure I'd have to look that one up, but definitely be careful with those bearings. Then we're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench to take out the cap on the bottom of the post on the outside. And a torque wrench, you don't need it technically, but I mean a torque wrench, a crow's foot, if you wanna torque it back down to the appropriate specs, right? We're gonna need a nine millimeter to separate the piston head from the shaft on the inside of the post when we open it up, right? We're gonna need picks. <sighs> now this, this is just a dumb idea. It's a security bit. It's a 5 64ths Torx bit, okay? So you're not gonna be able to take off the cap, the top cap, of the oil chamber with without this. So there's a hole in the middle. Again, it's a 564. So you could get them cheap. They sell these packages with a whole bunch, like 30 different security bits. For I wanna say like seven bucks I bought mine. So uh, they work well. To take off the cap or take out the cap, Fox makes their own tool, but you don't need to buy this tool. And they sell this tool for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. You go buy a 15 cent or 30 cent three 30 seconds bolt, get the longest one you can, and we'll do it with this one. I'll show you that this one does work, right? Now at the bottom of the inside of the post are two M or two M three slots that are used to sort of lift it. You'll see when we get there, these are M three bolts. Again, they cost you pennies. So I mean, pennies, I mean, 10 cents each, right? Just find the longest ones. That's the trick. Go to any hardware store. They'll have M three. Everybody carries M threes, just like everybody carries three 30 seconds. Retaining ring pliers, in order to help you screw down a couple of bolts because the shaft will want to spin, right? We're gonna need 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen key in order to unscrew the bleed port and the fill port. Now, we're gonna need, this is one tool you will need. I've tried coming up with an alternative. The thread is different on this one is the issue, right? So this is a Fox tool. It opens up the actuator, presses on the actuator and keeps it pressed so we can bleed the system, right? It's not expensive at least, so that's a nice thing. So you're definitely gonna need this Fox tool as well as the IFP depth tool, right? So you're not gonna be able to do this with a caliper. You're gonna need this IFP depth tool in order to set the IFP depth, but at least Fox got smart. They don't sell them for 50 bucks like they used to make. They make them out of a hard plastic now and it's like 15 bucks. So find it on special or use a coupon against it. and 
technically we won't need a bullet. Well, you don't really need the bullet tool. This version dropper is a lot more forgiving than the previous version droppers, right? The Fox transfer droppers. So, uh, but still it's good practice to actually use the bullet tool for the Fox transfer, okay? Now another custom tool you're gonna need, which sucks. This thing completely sucks. I hate it. It's dumb. I wish they just came up with a standard valve and valve adapter like everybody else. So this is an air fill tool. In order to fill up the stupid dropper, we're gonna need this, right? They have a new version of it, but I've never been able to find it. This is just dumb. It's expensive. This is the most expensive tool you're gonna need that's a custom tool, and it's just stupid. One, when you put it together, just make sure to use lots of plumber's tape because it will it will leak. So, uh, and make sure to put in the O-ring that comes with the kit down at the bottom over here, right? But it's a dumb tool. I wish you didn't need it, but unfortunately, guys, you're gonna need it and a high pressure shock pump for this particular dropper. It's 325 PSI, right? So now Fox makes a collar to set the bushing, okay? The inner bushing into its seat. You don't need to buy this. You could use one of these, right? Which leads me to, you're gonna need soft jaws. Soft jaws that either match the size of your post, 31.6, like I'm gonna be using a 30.9 for this post. And you could actually use one of these to, one of these holes to set that bush and just be careful doing it, right? We're also gonna need a soft jaw with a nine millimeter hole, okay? And I recommend, not needed, but recommend a plastic soft jaw in order to help you with bleeding to hold, to hold on to the inner body without scratching it, right? But if you're careful enough, you won't scratch it. It's not like there's a lot of pressure for bleeding. Outside of that, we're gonna need Loctite Blue. Oh, a torque wrench, because there are gonna be a couple of torque values. You don't need it, but it's, for me, I always torque everything whenever I can, right? So Loctite Blue, a little bit of float fluid, just a little bit, and uh, alcohol, paper towels, and to clean the inside, a, uh, the inside of the post body, a dowel will come in handy in order to take paper towels and force it through after you spray it with clean it with alcohol, right? If there's any other tools that we need, we'll go over it during the job. Next, let's go over the parts needed for the job. As for parts, pretty simple. We need a seal kit for a 2021 and on transfer post, 803-01-497 and 1.5 weight Fox oil. I'm not looking forward to opening this thing up. This thing stinks. Let's get on with the job. Before we start on the post, make sure to clean it as best you can. Get rid of all loose dirt in all little areas, okay? We don't wanna open this thing up and work on the internals, especially if there's loose dirt hanging around. You want it as clean as possible. So to start off with, we need to remove the actuator. Now you could use like a plier, like an Epix plier or a 10 millimeter wrench, and you're gonna take the 10 millimeter wrench and place it underneath this pin. Don't grab it from the pin part, just go underneath the pin and just give it a little turn. All right. Take it. And we put them on the side. Next, we take out the collar. For the collar, we can use either a plier, like a channel lock, but if you do, or a Nipix plier, even better. Uh, but if you do, uh, do yourself a favor and protect it. Wrap the outside edge with electric tape uh, just to protect it so you don't mar it, scratch it, right? Damage it and then you strip it maybe. Not strip it, but you know, just, uh, well, just do general damage to it. So I have a 38 millimeter wrench. It's actually 37 millimeters, the grip points. So what I did, I just took a washer, one millimeter washer, put it inside. I covered the ends with electric tape, just again, so I don't scratch the surface on this. And I'm uh, gonna put it in there. And now oh, let's open it up. It's gonna be a little bit stiff, but there we go. All right. Now the nice thing is with the crow foot, I could actually torque it down because this needs to be torqued down at the end, right? So, but again, you could use Nipix pliers or any type of channel lock, but protect your, uh, protect the collar so you don't damage it. So now we just take this guy. Actually, I could just take it off here. Open them up. All right. Oh, there we go. All right, watch out. There is a washer down here. We're going to have to take this guy out. Okay. 
Next, we will open them up. Inside the bottom part of the post where the actuator goes, there is a retaining ring. And we're gonna take a small pick. We're gonna get underneath it. And we are gonna pop it out. Come on. There we go. Ah. Get underneath, just like that. My bad. All right. Now, we're gonna separate the top half from the bottom half. Grab a towel just to get better grip because there's grease on here. But when we do so, we wanna be careful on the bottom. On this ring over here, there is a bearing and that bearing has a location and we have to make sure that we know exactly where that location is, okay? And it's gonna be in the back side of the post. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the post just like that and slowly just try and open it. Might be a little bit stiff. You might have to give it a bit of a jerk. There we go. We just want to loosen this collar. Once you loosen that collar, it becomes a lot easier, right? Now, before we take this out completely, let's go the other way. If we go the other way, we see the bottom. Yep, there's the bearing, right? So this bearing is spot specific, basically. There's a bunch of dimples in this bottom collar and we want to mark where that bearing is. Now the best way to mark it, in my opinion, is just give it a little scratch underneath. Why? The scratch won't do damage to anything. And ultimately, if you use marker, you might actually clean this thing with alcohol and all of a sudden the marker will be gone, right? The marking of the marker will be gone. So just give it a little surface scratch. And then you know from that point on, that's where your bearing goes. See, if I wipe it, the scratch is still there. So now we can take this whole mechanism, open it up. These are your pins, watch out. Pull it all out and done. All right, relatively clean. Next steps, let's take out all the small parts and pieces. First, let's start with removing the bearing. Best way to handle that bearing, keep it on a magnet that's a really small bearing, okay? Just keep it on a magnet and put it on the side, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this bushing, put it on the side. We're gonna take off our pins, three pins, okay? Two and three, we're gonna take these guys, we're gonna put them on the side, and we're gonna take off this bushing. We're gonna put this guy, I'll just leave him there for now, gotta take him off later. And now let's just clean any grease off the post. Okay. Cool. Next we will well, take out the rest of the small parts and open them up. To take off the bottom collar, we need to put them in a vise. Put the shaft in a vise, eight millimeter. Don't strangle them, just put them down nice and snug. And then underneath over here, we use a 10 millimeter wrench and just move, tighten them a little bit more. And done. Okay, we're gonna take this guy. and he is off. All right, we take him off the vise. Now we can take off the rest of our parts. Boom, we have the collar on the inside, or the bush on the inside of the collar, just like that. All right, so let's start cleaning up some of those parts and uh, before we open this guy up. Okay, first thing we'll do is clean the inside of the outer post. Take some alcohol, spray them inside. All right, shake them around a little bit just to break up any grease. Grab a towel, bunch it up really good and make sure there's a lot of like corner pieces because there's guides in there and we want to make sure we clean everything within those guides, okay? So we're gonna do that. Stick them in there like a ball. All right, and then take a dowel and push them through. Do it one more time. 
All right, this guy's real clean. Take it out and push him through, and he is clean. Clean the outside. And this guy's done, we will take care of this whole ring later. The next step is we need to remove the bleed screw. So if you notice, you have three holes on one side, one hole on the other side. The one that's on its own is the bleed. And what we want to do is alleviate all pressure within the system before we open the whole thing up, okay? In order to do that, we need a one and a half millimeter Allen. All right, I'll point this away from you and slowly, I mean slowly, Twist it open. You could hear the air coming out. Let all the air come out, okay? The more you open it, the more air will come out. Do not point this at you. Do not look into it, just in case. And don't point it at anybody. Okay, we take it, now we unthread them out. You can see that? Having a magnetic tip helps. And there we go. Leave them in there for now. Because inside here is a bearing. I have another magnet. If you don't have, well, more than one magnet, the first magnet that we put the ball on that we don't want to lose, just put it somewhere safe and use that magnet to get the second ball out, okay? I'm gonna leave that on the side. Next, we remove the fill screw. So the fill screw is, right, is, is opposite the bleed screw. So these are like two holes, and in between there is a screw. That's a fill screw, right? So again, one and a half millimeter, put it in there, and just take it out. Now, what can happen, sometimes it gets real stuck and the whole mechanism will want to move, like this whole silver thing will want to spin around. If he does do that, then what you can do is take some type of uh, retaining clip plier, put them in the holes. It doesn't have to be a 90 degree angle one, it could be a straight one, and then find a way to hold this down. We'll either put this in a clamp, hold it straight, and then use the Allen to remove that screw, okay? Just in case, the screw stiff and it spins, it doesn't want to come loose because it's spinning around with the collar on the inside. Okay, so we take this guy out. All right, once again with the same magnet. What the heck? It gets stuck on there. With the same magnet, we are. Well, he didn't come out. There's a bearing in there, and the mag is not getting them out. Okay, we need to get that bearing out, all right? So first, let's see if we can tap them out. Oop. Let's open this up and take them out after. Basically, what we need to do is just raise this thing up in order to be able to get that bearing out of there, right? But for now, along with the bearings, put these two little M3 screws on the magnet and keep them all together, okay? As you can see, I managed to get the second bearing out. What did I use? An even bigger magnet. This magnet actually is really powerful for its size. It's actually used to uh, recover bad hard disks. So uh, super, po super powerful magnet for its size, right? So it immediately took it out. So if you have a more strong magnet or depending on how strong your magnets are, that's usually not supposed to get stuck, but every once in a while, I guess it will, it'll take it out. But like I said, a magnet should be able to take out both bearings very easily or else what we would have to do is be very careful, open up the top, empty it out, and then pull the whole thing out and try and get it from there so we can get closer to the actual base, okay? So now let's open up the top. So next we need to take out this bolt over here and this, uh, I, I, why? This is a tamper-proof 5 64ths Torx. So it's a Torx, a really small Torx with a hole in the middle because there is a pin in the middle and we need to get that hole over that pin, right? 
So we just take them, put them in there just like that, and thread them out. Okay, oil might want to come out. There's some pressure, be careful. There you go. Take that screw. There is an O-ring on there. We will change that out. Put them on the side. Okay. Now, what we're going to want to do is, well, we're going to have to press this guy down and take out a retaining clip. Grab a paper towel. The whole goal is to press them down in order to better expose a retaining clip in there. All right, so just give them a press. Oil will want to jet out, most likely. Okay. You'll feel them sink in. There we go. That's the retaining clip. Okay, now we're going to grab a pick, scoop it out. All right, be careful with it, and just slowly but surely scoop it out, just like that. Boom. Put them on the side. Okay, next we want to take off this cap. Fox makes a special tool for this, but you know what? You don't need the special tool. Five thirty-second screw. Put them in there, screw them in. Might be a little bit stiff. Screw them in about a good half inch to an inch. Might be a little bit stiff. Might want to put a washer on them actually to make it easier. Take them and there we go. Ta-da! Done. You just saved yourself a solid, ooh, probably 20 bucks. This thing probably costs like, God, I don't know, 20 cents. So put him on the side. All right. Grab an oil pan. All right. God, man, this stuff just stinks. It's amazing how much this stinks. I don't know what they put in here. You'd think they put like thousand year old dead fish in here. Horrible. All right. Next up, let's take out the insides of the damper. Next, we're going to push the shaft through the top of the dropper. Oh. 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 Oh, that's a piston. Just push enough to get some grip on the underneath part. Uh, come on. For crying out loud. Okay. There we go. All right. And there's our piston. All right. Now let's clean up this mess and we will remove the bottom collar. Okay, next we want to access the retaining ring that holds this collar in place, right? So we take this, just push them down. There you go. You'll hear a little pop. Then you can see the exposed um, retaining ring. Take a pick with a blunt edge. Put it under the tip. And again, just scoop them out lightly, hold on to them, and put them on the side. To take this collar out, remember the two screws, M3 screws, basically just go buy, they're real cheap, literally cents, buy the longest ones you could find. Any hardware shop will have them. Thread them in, the bleed hole and the fill hole. All right, just like that. Again, they're just regular M3 screws. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try and lift the whole thing up. You might be a little bit stiff. Be careful with them. Do them side by side. Try and wedge them out. There we go. Basically it's an O-ring holding them. Two O-rings. And there we go. And all that's left is the IFP on the inside. Put this guy on the side. So now we have one more retaining ring right inside, right? So the first one was on this seat. The second one is right underneath it, basically. Just grab it. This one's really easy to take out. Just be careful with it. All right. Put him on the side. Now we need to grab a dowel and push the IFP 
from the top out the bottom of the post. The only thing is, come on. Oh, just turn them sideways. Great. Beautiful. Let's see if I can get them like this. Be careful with them. There we go. Be very careful with them. Our post is empty. All right. Now it's literally nothing more than cleaning up, changing seals, and putting them all back together. First, let's start off by cleaning the upper post. Take alcohol, spray them inside. Grab a clean, lint-free paper towel. All right, put them inside. Like that. Then grab a dowel, wooden dowel. Oh. Should have done it the other way around. Oh, it's doing this guy. Top down. Because there is a lip on the bottom over here going down. In this way you hit it, coming out from the top you don't. So okay. Yeah. One, two, three, and oop. Four many bunches are good. Come on. All right. You guys clean. Let's do that bottom part where that lip is down there. And he is clean. No more grease on him. Done. Next, we want to change the head. Right now, I'm sure you noticed that I already removed all the O-rings, put them in order based on size, and in the kit, we get a new head that we're going to replace this one with, okay? In order to do that, we're going to put them in a vise, nine millimeter hole in a soft jaw. Before we actually do that, we're going to pull out the actual piston itself. This is what the actuator touches, and it touches a valve assemb an assembly up here that allows oil to flow through these ports. It is that simple. Okay, so then we're going to put this guy in a 9mm soft jaw. Time down. Then we're going to grab a 9mm wrench and we're going to apply the wrench. So this is the top. At the bottom over here, as you can see, there's two grabbing points. Just find those grabbing points. Enter right here and it should be easy. There we go. And our head is off. Now let's take this guy, clean him of any old oil and grease, clean the shaft good, lint free towel for sure. We don't need to clean the inside. And we're going to put him back in. Okay, when you put him back in, just to make sure, there's two thread. There's threads on each side, but if you notice on this side, there is a flat part before the threads start. On this side, there isn't. The threads start right away. This side down. The part with the flat parts above the threads up. Okay, we take our new head, thread it by hand, always by hand first. Okay, slowly tighten them. There we go. Torque wrench, 4.5 newton meters. Ooh, boy, he's not gonna fit. Oh yeah, he's gonna fit. Oh. oh, I bet your old thing's slipping. Four point five one. All right. So now let's clean our shaft. That's right. Clean your shaft. And then we're going to apply some grease on them. Scolium, ceram butter, don't matter. We're going to put this guy inside. And he is done.
let's test the shaft to make sure it works before we move on to the rest. Uh, just put it on the surface. I'll put on this wood for now and just press them up and down. And that's it. We are working great. So again, this is what the actuator hits and opens up a valve system in here, which allows oil to flow. All right. Next, let's work on the rest of the parts, change out seals. First, we're going to work on the IFP. There's two quad rings on it, one on the outside here, one on the side, and then one on the inside. on the side. They're the only quad rings in the kit, so we know these are the replacements. All right, so we're gonna do is clean out the seats best we can. Lint-free cloth, make sure here to use a lint-free cloth. Then what I'm gonna do, put grease, just a little bit, just a coat. And actually put a little bit of grease in the seat. Shrimp butter on the inside, just in the seat like that. Start with the inside one first. Cup it, sink it into its seat. Let one side slip in, then the other side is going to slip in. Now what you want to make sure over here is that when you put him in, he does not twist. Right? And then press down on him on the other side. I was trying to show you. It was just about to go in. So again, flip him, let him go down. Then he will sit in just like that in his seat. If he doesn't, just tuck him in just like that and then push him back in from the other side. And he should find his way in. Just make sure that he does not Huh. Flip on you. Make sure that he is not twisted, and he is not twisted. He's good. Now we just take this guy and again, put him in, but make sure he does not twist on you. These could twist, oh man, I'm not in frame, crap. These could twist on you pretty easy. Like right there, he's twisted, see what I mean? So, we wanna make sure we can twist him back. So well, that's a twist. Not good. And there you go. IFP is done. Put him on the side. Next, we'll grab this collar. He's got, let's put these guys on the side. Grab the collars. Two seals on the outside. Again, one seal on the inside. One. Two. These are different sizes, if you notice, so keep track of that. They're not the same size. The one that goes towards the outside is a larger one than the one on the inside, right? Let me grab this guy here on the inside. Right frame? Yes. Always something to think about. Okay. And that's the thicker one, right? So, we have to make sure we grab the right ones now. So, this guy is obviously that guy. And the big question is... Is that guy that guy and that guy that guy? Yes, it is. Okay. So again, what we're going to do, clean any old grease off of here. So now let's start with the inside ring again. We're going to take some grease, put on the seat on the inside. Grab the new O-ring, bend them, put them in, let them sink in the seat. Tuck them in if you haven't stuck in just like that. And then basically from the opposite side,
nearly there. Um, um. Mm -hmm. Pop that over here on the bottom. Come on, get in. There we go. That's why I love these flat picks for this stuff. And he is inside. Now, with these guys, put some grease on them. We'll start with the large one first. Oh man, I'm out of frame. That's one. A little bit, bit of grease on the smaller one. And that is two. This part is done. Next, we grab the other, the other uh, head. This only has one O-ring on it. Oops, let's not mix them up. Take these guys, put them on the side. This guy's obviously for this guy here, right? So let's just clean up the outside a little bit. A little bit of grease on him. And put him over. Make sure he's in the seat. He is done. We have a little o-ring on the screw at the top. That screw with that, well, the security screw or tamper-free screw. Put that guy in there. He is done. Okay. Let's start assembling the inner part. We're gonna start with the IFP. We're gonna put a good amount of slick, well, saran butter in this case, on the washers. Well, I have washers on the seals. Okay. Then we're gonna take them, and in this position, flat part goes in. This cone part stays up. We're gonna put him in, just like that. Okay. Now, if you remember. There were two retaining rings in here. There's the two seats. We're gonna put this guy, he's a little bit tricky. Be careful with this guy. Try and start him with the round part first, tuck him in. Don't, don't start him with the edges because you have a potential of scratching him, right? So start him with the back part first and tuck him down with your fingernail. But man, I'm crying out loud. I'm not in frame, sorry about that guys. So, and then just put him in a seat. You'll find it, you'll hear the click, there it is. And now, roll the rest of it in there and make sure he is in here. He is absolutely in here, okay? So our IFP is in. Next, we install the shaft into the post, okay, from the top part. So we take them, make sure you aligns with the IFP hole, just like that. And just be careful with it. Don't force him. He'll fit and he'll fit nice and comfortable. There we go. And we are in. All right, now we bleed. So before we start, let's get everything in order as far as parts and tools that we will need for this job to make it easy as possible, right? So you will need vice blocks 26 millimeter. I got a 25.4, good enough. We're not cranking it down. We just need something to hold it in place, right? If you have a little, uh, container to collect oil just in case it spills and oil will spill, right? As far as parts, so first we're gonna fill it up with oil, so make sure you have your 1.5 uh, weight oil handy. Make sure the top is loose. Be careful with this stuff. Uh, don't make a mess out of it, right? So after we fill it up with oil, we're gonna cycle it a few times, trying to evacuate bubbles. Then when we're done, we are going to put the top cap on. So I took off the top cap using this three by three 30 second screw. You could put it in by using the same screw. You do not need to pay the money for the actual Fox tool. You could get away with just getting a, as long as a three, uh, as long as a screw as you can, which should be real cheap, 15 cents probably uh, for one of these. So save your money, you don't need it. Uh, unless, especially if you're working on your own shock, right? But I'm gonna use my tool since I have the tool, right? So I'm gonna have that handy. Uh, then we need the retaining clip that will go and lock this guy into place. And then make sure you have, we already put the seal on the new uh, screw, the cap screw, make sure you have your tamper-proof uh, 5 ths Torx bit, right, ready. Also, for bl the bleeding process, have something that like that's rubbery that we could tap in order to try and agitate bubbles in the system, just like that, right? So then at the bottom, we're gonna put in the cap. 
after we put in the cap, we are, well, first we're gonna set the IFP, then we're gonna put in the cap, right? So make sure you have your IFP tool handy, okay? When we put in the cap, it's gonna go in, and the only way to get it out is by using M3 bolts. Just go buy the longest M3 bolt you can. Again, these will cost you about 20 cents each, and you could use one. I just use two for easier leverage to pull it up. So to set it in place and then we lock it in, well, we lock it in with the retaining ring and then we pick it up and lock it against the retaining ring, right? Now, also retaining clip pliers to help you screw this guy down, just in case the shaft wants to spin while you're tightening this guy down. He doesn't need a lot of torque, but ultimately uh, still he'll want to spin, okay? So now let's start on, oh yeah, make sure you have paper towels handy because you are going to need paper towels, uh, paper towels. This is going to get a little bit, uh, it, you can only keep it so clean, okay? Let's get on with the job. We had already inserted the shaft through the IFP, right? So we need to make sure that the actual shaft is through the IFP the way you see it. And then we need to leave some space on top over here. Not much space, about a half a centimeter. That's more than enough right there, right? Why? Because we are gonna fill up the inside with oil, okay? Open this guy up, I should have opened him up before. Be careful with this guy, try not to make a mess of him. All right, so let's fill him up with oil. Just like that. Make sure not to overfill him. You should be able to see on the sides as he's filling up. There he goes. And I overfilled him just by a little bit. Okay, put this guy on the side, put him far away from you. You do not want him to spill everywhere. And if he spills somewhere, make sure he's on an environment like this that's easy to clean, okay? So then let's clean the shaft a little bit. And we're gonna put this guy in a, again, 26 millimeter hole. This one's 25.4, good enough. So I'm gonna take him, I'll put him in just like that. Now the goal here is to sink in the whole shaft, right? When we do that, oil is just gonna wanna pop everywhere. So you gotta be careful and do it slowly. The slower you do it, the better off you are. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover the whole thing all right, we're going to take our thumbs so this way. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and basically use your thumbs and just press down, fit them in the hole and press down on them just like that. In fact, I went a little bit too quick over there. It's going to get a little bit stiff and then he should be able to go through with ease. And we're going to tuck him in, let's say about to the end of your thumb fingernail, between your thumb fingernail, the end of your thumb fingernail and your knuckle, right? I mean, we all have different size hands, but yeah, about an inch in, put it that way. So let's verify on the bottom that we are good. Yeah, so you want them sticking out about the width of your thumb, right? So we're pretty good over there. In fact, he could go in a little bit more. Just a little bit, not much. So that's good. What we need to do next is we're going to fill them up a little bit on top over here with oil, and then we're going to start uh, cycling the shaft. We're going to be bringing it in and out, right? In order to do that, we need this piston compressed to order or open the valve. This is the actuator piston, right? The actuator button at the bottom does nothing more than push up this piston, opens up the valve, oil goes through the holes. So this little tool over here, when we screw it all the way, when we screw it all the way in, that's a oil come out. When we screw it all the way in, it'll act activate the actuator okay it'll press up against it and push it in in fact we could hear it watch this well, maybe we didn't hear it this time oh well well let me just clean up that oil that's spilt that was just residual on top like i said this oil is really fine it gets everywhere okay so now we're going to put them back in the shaft hopefully it's not too close Okay, and then what we're gonna do is just cover the top with oil, just to the top. Oop, not all the way to the top of here, just the top of the piston. I put a little bit more than I wanted to put over there, right? 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the shaft. Again, as I mentioned, we're going to cycle it. We're going to go up and down and try and do it slowly. The whole goal here, in fact, you might need to help yourself in the beginning because it's going to be stiff. There we go. So now we want to get rid of all the bubbles in the system, right? So like I said, there's going to be a lot of bubbles in here. There's a lot of little holes that have air in them and we need to get rid of all of those all that air in every one of those holes, right? So just keep on going up and down, up and down. I'm in a weird position over here, so it's a little bit hard for me to get good purchase, only because the whole camera and my arms are stretched out. The, the more up and down you go, the, 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 more down, the cleaner angle you have going up and down, the easier this is. So try not to push it up and down on an angle, right? So. Can we see inside? Hopefully we can see inside. I can't tell there's too much light on the screen. Okay, now let's cycle them all the way down. Now let's bring them up, but bring them up slowly. Cycle them down again. Bring them up slowly. As we bring them up slowly, air oil will go through the ports. If we bring them up slowly, an air will be displaced. Okay. If you notice, I'm bringing him up right now, and yet he's not overfilling. That's because oil is seeping through, right? So, see what I mean? I'm pretty much near the top. If I bring him up quick, he's going to push all that oil up. So when you bring him up like this, you just want to do him slowly. We want to displace as much oil as possible, or air as possible. See all the little air bubbles now that I went down? That's all the ones that were trapped. Right? Oops. He is going to be jerky because they're brand new stiff seals. I don't have good leverage. Try and bring them up slowly. Okay. Now another thing we can do, again, agitate them with rubber, not metal, just to loosen up any bubbles. Or any air that might be trapped somewhere. Mm -hmm. See, little bubbles are still coming out. I can see them at the bottom. Just take your time here, guys. This is worth your while. You don't have to do this often. Don't rush it. Just make sure that you removed all the air. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna cycle them all the way down. And I'm gonna slowly bring them back up, slowly, slowly, slowly. Use your vice as leverage, like I'm literally bringing them up millimeters at a time right now. All right. Okay, so bring them down again. Slowly. Oh, a few air bubbles still creeping out. I can see it from the depths. Like I said, it's very deceiving in here, man. Sometimes you think you're done, but there's a lot of little bubbles and a lot of little ones. See all those little bubbles? Those are not your friend. Oops, that was too quick. Okay, another thing that we can do is remove the actuator tool. Okay, so I removed the actuator tool. Now I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna use the backside and I'm gonna press up on the piston as if I was actuating it with the remote control. Okay, and we should see, oops, I did not want that to happen. That was a little bit unexpected. Just cycle it, and we should see some. There we go. Look at all those little bubbles. See that? That's just from actuating the piston, as opposed to just leaving the port open. Little air bubbles get trapped all the way around the side of the piston.
Okay. Look at that. Just keep on cycling it. Okay, now let's put it back on, screw it back on all the way again, and let's go up and down again. Oh, I got it. All right, remember, screw it in all the way, and then just cycle it again. And it's going to be stiff, but can't do anything about it. Slowly bring it up. Slowly bring it up. See right there, it's near the top, right there. Now let's bring it down, try and bring it down slowly. There you go, a few more small bubbles coming out. Slowly bring it up. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do again is bring it up, leave it somewhere in the middle, take off the actuator tool again, flip it upside down, use the back side just to hit the piston and activate it. There you go, see that bubble? That's just from activating the seals little bubbles. Okay, no more bubbles coming there. Turn them upside down, screw them all the way in again. Again, all the way in will not work if it's not screwed all the way in. He'll lock when he goes all the way in. And then let's slowly cycle them again. Nearly done. I feel it. Still got those little bubbles coming up. It's doing pretty good. I've seen a bubble come up in a few cycles. When you get to a point and you cycled it five, six, seven times and you see nothing come up, like right now those bubbles are just stuck on top. I don't see any new bubbles coming out from below. Okay, let it sit there for a couple of minutes just so all those little bubbles float up and let it clear out, okay? Plus I'll let the camera cool off, I'll be back. So again, cycle it up and down, Slowly but surely, right? Take it all the way down, bring it all the way up. Do it slowly, no rush. You do not want to rush this, okay? And then when it gets to a point where you've cycled it multiple times and you see like no bubbles coming out, you are done, okay? So right now I am looking good. And again, what you can do one last time, take the tool, Invert it, actuate the piston. No bubbles coming out. We are good to go. Okay, screw the thing, screw the tool back in again. Let's just give it a couple. I'm always paranoid about stuff like this. So go up and down. All right, yeah, there's definitely no holes, no bubbles coming up. The only ones that are on the surface, and if I agitate them, they'll probably disappear. Those 
holes aren't getting sucked in anyway. Okay, now let's bring it up one last time, slowly, as high as you can. Okay. Slowly, very slowly. All right, that's pretty much near the top. I'm only about half an inch off. Okay, now we are gonna pull it down all the way. All right, we're gonna extend it all the way. Ooh, is that a bubble? Yeah, a bubble just came out of the top. Oops. Okay, I didn't want to do it like that. I'm just at an odd angle, guys. For you guys, it's probably going to be a little bit easier getting grip on him. i got to wrap my body around a whole camera setup over here. And I can barely see inside. Okay, so we're good. I haven't seen a bubble in a while. We're good. So now, we're going to take them all the way down. Okay, extend them, extend the shaft the whole way all the way to the bottom. So right now, in fact, let me lift them up a bit just to make sure. Yep, I'm all the way at the bottom, okay? So now we wanna set the IFP, right? So we need to make sure that the shaft is all the way down. So first, we are gonna take off the actuator tool. All right, put it on the side, we're gonna need it. Then we're gonna insert the IFP. Again, make sure you insert the right IFP. Then we're going to put the actuator tool back on. All the way, it has to be all the way to the end. Okay, we need to open up the port. So now we're going to make sure that the shaft is extended all the way down. We're going to keep it all the way down. We're going to take the IFP and we're going to sync it up. Now, if you notice, I have, could you see? Should be able to see that. I'm not sure if you can, but I have a gap, right? That means the IFP came basically close to all the way down. So hold the actuator down, and basically we're just going to push up the IFP right there. I can't push it up anymore. Again, force down the actuator, and then remove the actuator tool. All right, there we go. And that part is done. Okay, so now we're going to put the cap back on. Let's top off. the tube with oil, all right? Then we're gonna put in the cap. Make sure the screw's not in the hole, right? Oil's gonna wanna jet out, and we're also gonna trap in air at the same time. So slower the better, try and roll this in so we can get the least amount of air to go in there, right? So just try and roll it in like that, there you go. And then, best bet, just to put a towel around here because the oil is going to want to come out and just slowly push them in until below the retaining ring seat. Okay. Just a little bit. All right. Now we're going to take our retaining ring. And we're going to put it in this side first, right? Just like that. And make sure he is sitting in there well. He is fully in. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take this guy out of here. And we're gonna put a little bit of oil on the top, just a little bit. Not that much for crying out loud. This friggin' mess. Okay, the reason I did that is because we want to grab the oil, the air that's in there. We're going to try and tap it out. All right, see what I mean? Look at that air. So basically move it around and try and tap that air out. The whole goal here is to displace the air with oil. And there is going to be a significant amount of air considering the design. Keep on tapping. Did you guys even see that? Yeah. 
I wasn't even looking at the camera to see if it was in frame. Sorry about that. Oh, I'll put a little bit more oil in there. Just be careful. Too much oil again, but Then once we see that there is no oil, I mean air, just keep on moving them around. Okay, we're good. I haven't seen air in a while. Cool. Yep, we are good. We're gonna put them back in, vice. Clamp them down. And we're gonna put in our screw. Now remember, it's that crazy security. They did not need to do this. Why, Fox? You could have just put a regular Allen bolt in there. We're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in. All right, and you see the way it's spinning. We need to grab our retaining ring clip plier and hold them in place so we could work them down. So I have a retaining clip plier. I'm gonna hold him down there. And we're just gonna do this finger tight. You don't have to torque down hard on this guy. He's literally like a couple of Newton meters. So just finger tight, literally just finger tight like that. All right. Boom. Boom. Then we're gonna take the remainder of our oil and we're gonna dump them in here. And the top half is done. Now we just need to close up the bottom half. Okay, then we get our cap. Grease the cap on the outside. Take our bullet tool, put the bullet tool on top of the shaft, coat it with shrimp butter, with the holes, with the big holes facing up. Ta-da! Like I said, you could try and do it without the bullet tool, but you might damage the quad rings inside. Okay? Then we take this guy and we press him down. Now to stick him in there, we could use our IFP tool as opposed to using our hands and he will stick them in. Now the whole goal is stick them in past the seat for the retaining ring. All right, there he goes. So take our retaining ring, find a seat, large size first and Take this guy and tuck him in and make sure he is tucked in all the way. And there he goes. Now we grab our two screws, our M3 screws, because he's in too deep. And this is why longer screws work better. Screw them in well. All right, not just one or two threads because we are going to pull up on them. And you could do it with just one, but two is a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. Actually, you could do it with one, really. And the whole idea is just prop them up just like that. There he goes. He's all the way at the top. It doesn't take much. Okay. Done. Now we take off our screw. My hand's like real slippery. Come on. There we go. Cool stuff. Our bleed is done. Now we put in our bearings and our screws to the fill ports and we fill them up with air. 
So next, if you remember, we had on our magnet, a uh, on one of the magnets, two bearings and two screws, right? Now, we're gonna take Loctite Blue, and we're gonna cover the screws. Just put a dab, not on the part that you screw in, on the flap, oops, that's like way too much that popped up. That hole's way too big. Well, might as well just grab some of this guy and put him on here. And we will let the rest drip off. Okay. So then we have our bleed port. We have our fill port. Fill port is with the two uh, holes next to it. Bleed port's on its own. We're going to take one of the bearings. And we're going to put it in the bleed port. Now be careful over here. You want to make sure it falls in the bleed port. Grab a tool that will help you guide it in. See what I mean? Right there and boom. Then we're going to grab 1.5 millimeter hex, put the screw on it with the Loctite, put it in there, screw it down, make sure it's screwed down, don't strip it, slowly take your time, make sure it's screwed in there right. Okay, this is very light, it's actually like, again, one and a half, two newt meters. So just finger tight when you get to the end. Literally finger tight. Oop, see the way it turned? We're gonna need our, these two holes on the side of the middle hole are used for retaining clip plier. And again, we're just gonna go finger tight, done. Okay, so now we fill them up with air and for that we are gonna need Fox's air fill tool, which in my opinion is just a crappy tool. It's so unneeded, they could have they should have just come up with a way to use a regular Schrader valve. There is no need to put nitrogen in a dropper post. I don't care what they say. All right, so uh, air is more than good enough. So this is gonna be the most expensive tool you're gonna to have to buy. When you put it together, make sure you use a lot of plumber's tape, okay? This thing leaks pretty bad. Put a lot of plumber's tape, and don't forget to put the O-ring at the bottom over here, okay? So we're also gonna need the actuator tool again and a high pressure shock pump. This shock goes up to 325 PSI, uh, shock. Uh, this dropper goes up to 325 PSI. So you have the two fake holes over here and then in the middle we have our fill port, right? So we're gonna take this guy and carefully thread him in the fill port. If he doesn't go in, just turn him back and find the threads and then put him in and he should go in easily. All right, we're gonna bring him all the way down, just like that, finger tight all the way down. And then we're going to screw in our shock pump all the way. All right. All the way so there's no leaks. And then we're going to put in our actuator, and this has to be screwed in all the way or else it won't work. Right to the end. Just remember, to the end, that you can't do it anymore. Right there. All right, now we fill them up to 325 PSI. I'm going to put these guys here to absorb, to dampen, I should say, some of the sound as I fill them up so he doesn't just drive us nuts, okay? When he's all set up, your best bet is to use the table as leverage. We want this thing to move as little as possible. It's a very delicate system. Like I said, this whole thing's done. So we want to bring it to 325 PSI without moving it moving at the least. Nearly there. And where's 325? There's 300, 320, 320. There we are. Okay. So I got it right there. And we unscrew them. That air is coming out of the actual shock. out of this system, it didn't leak out from the inside of here. All right, cool. So that's all said and done. We have them filled up. Like I said, it's just a dumb tool. So now we put in our bearing and our uh, Loctite covered bolt. Now be careful with this guy. He might slip into the two ones on, this, on the two holes on the side. You want them in the middle. 
All right. And what you might need is a tool like this to plug them in. Is it in? Oh, it's not in. Oh. Come on. It was on the magnet, and now the tool's magnetized. Great, my luck. My luck. Oh, for crying out loud. Look at that. Look at that. Of all the luck. There you go. Let's try that again. Oh, he fell in. Perfect. So then we take our one millimeter Allen. Again, we got Loctite on him. And we close him up. Don't strip him. Make sure he is threaded properly. I'm having a tough time with this one. There we go. Again, finger tight, 1.9. 1.5 newton meters, done. Nothing more than that. Take out the actuator. Ta da! Our dropper internals are complete. Now it's a question of uh, changing out these parts and finishing up the outside. First, we're going to start off by changing the remainder of the seals. All right, so first, we're going to start off with the post itself, the inner post. Now, I don't remember taking this seal out, but there is a seal that goes here, and I honestly don't remember taking it out. So it's this small, thin seal right here. I must have taken it out, and I don't realize. I, I, I honestly don't remember. Okay, so we're going to take this guy. The reason I don't change these guys with the other ones is just in case anything happens. These are exposed, basically. So if anything happens, I don't want to damage new ones, right? So that's why I leave them last. And we have a wiper. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the metal ring. Then we're going to take out the wiper. Put that on the side. We're going to put a new wiper. Clean the inside real well. All right. Make sure you clean the groove on the inside where the wiper sits, or the wiper seat itself. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put, oh, I forgot it comes with the ring. That's right. I didn't need to take the ring off. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Then we're going to put the new wiper in, just like that. All right. Put this guy on the side. Then we have our new plastic seals. Here's our plastic new split ring. Here's our other bushing, and then on the bottom of, or on the top of the bottom cap, we have a new gasket. So we're gonna take this guy out, and we're gonna put the new one in. All right, put that guy inside. Careful with him, it's a little tight. Right in there. there we go. And tuck him in. Wait a second. Hold on, I think I messed up with this one. No, I didn't. Okay. We're literally putting a square peg in a round hole. Okay. Come on. There we go. And he is in. And that's it. So we have our bearing still on this magnet. Now we assemble it all together. Okay, one seal that I forgot to change. Remember the seal that was out here? So that was a new one. That actually goes on the inside in here. So we gotta take this guy. We gotta tuck him. Where are you going? We gotta tuck him all the way at the bottom. Make sure he's sitting flat at the bottom. All right. Just like that. Now it's all ready to go back together. First, we're going to start off with 
the wiper, we are going to grease it real well. All right. Be generous here. You're going to be using this thing. Cool. Then we're going to take it and we're going to slip it on the post. All right, just like that. Take whatever is underneath and spread it on there. Then we're going to take this collar here with this bushing, grease it on the inside, slip him in. All right. Then we're going to take the split ring, grease him well on the inside. And we're going to put him over that washer right there. Okay. Next, we have to put this cap on. Let's put this guy back on. We need to go in the vise and soft jaw, nine millimeter. Lock him down. Okay, crack him pretty good. We take him, bumper goes down, hollow side goes up, thread him in by hand first. Oh, man, grease gets everywhere so quick. My hands are all greasy already. Okay. And then we take a 10 millimeters crow foot at 3.4. Already preset. Grab him where I find the flat spot. There we go, 3.43. This guy is done. Now we put him inside the tube. Before we put him inside the tube, remember we had that bearing on the magnet, right? We have to find, there it is, the score mark we made with the dimple. And we need to put that bearing, a little bit of grease on there to hold the bearing in. We need to put it on, oop, there it is. The dimple with the score mark right there. Why is that important? On the back of the post over here is a slot and that bearing needs to fit in that slot. But before we put it in, we're going to put grease on the post all over the place. Just cover it with grease. Good amount. Don't be afraid. Make sure you cover the slots. Make sure you cover his bushing to protect it. And then put enough for the upper bushing to get protected too. I don't care what they say. Grease is good for dropper posts. All right, as long as it's put in the right spots. So now, remember we have that dimple, all right? I mean that bearing, and that bearing aligns with the slot at the rear of the post. So try and, I don't know if you can see that well, but just align it and it'll slip right in like that. You see, you can't turn it sideways. So you have to turn the whole post sideways. All right, so now before we put the pins in, we're gonna try and slip this bushing in first. All right, okay, oop, see, that's why we try and slip that bushing in first. That O-ring underneath it sort of gives it tension. Wow, that's pretty stiff. Why so stiff? You are sitting properly, right? Yes, you are sitting properly. Okay. Let's see if I can do it this way. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now let's pull them out. Oh, God, not all the way out. We just want to expose, just expose the pins. Okay. Now, we have to find the rear of the post. So the rear of the post is the higher side. And we want to line the, this pin at the rear of the post to the middle of the letters before we put the pins in. It'll make your life a lot easier. All right, so just about there. So now we're going to take the pins. I put the rings up. We already inspected them. Everything looked good with them, right? Put them in their slots. And three. I said, and three, all right. And now they should go in pretty easy. Nope, I missed it. Might have to jiggle it in. With all the grease, it might be a little bit tricky. Use your body as leverage. Come on. Again, might have to twist. 
a lot of grease in my hands. Twist the post a little bit. Oh, come on, man, for crying out loud. Why can't anything be easy? Oh, uh, okay. Let's take them out a little bit. Right there. One, two, and three. All right. Now, again, there we go. When they line up, it just slips right in. All right. And there goes that one. Clean the threads. Next, we finish up the bottom. Before we finish up the bottom, I need to tuck in the bushing. All right. And Fox has a tool for that. Right, it allows you to tuck in the bushings easily. Reality is, you could use a soft jaw. Basically a soft jaw that has a hole big enough that'll cover the, um, that'll fit in the, the, the actual tube, right? I think it's around 26 millimeters, I'm not sure, give or take. So, since I got the tool, I'm gonna use the tool. And the way this works, on one side, and the other side, Put them in the soft jaw, or put them in the vise, not the soft jaw. All right, Get down and basically try and fit in the there. We go. I don't know why they did it like that. They're like the only guys that do that. And we have our collar tucked in. Okay, now we finish up the bottom. So next we want to tuck in the post and then we want to put in the split ring in its seat or the retaining ring in its seat. All right, take your fingers and make, oops, he's not sitting in a seat there. There we go, now he's sitting in a seat. Done. All right, then we want to take our actuator put it in here and basically torque them down to 10 millimeter torque them down to let me do it this side uh what's 10 millimeter right oh great you don't need to torque them down i mean you can just do it by hand but 4.5 newton come on it's gonna be give me a tough time 4.5 newton meters my hands are all greasy keeps on spinning around there we go 4.64 all right now we finish up the top cap for the top cap first thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of alcohol clean the threads okay we'll clean the whole pole since we're at it but definitely clean the threads all right then we're gonna take a little bit of loctite blue put it on the threads all right you don't need to go too crazy there you go, more than enough, way too much actually. Pull on it, shake it, move it around, put this guy out, okay? Now, this is a 30.9 post, so I'm gonna put him in a 30.9 hole soft jaw. All right. Screw down my hand. This guy is slippery. Come on. All right, then we torque him. nine newton meters all right got my torque wrench put them on the teeth and teeth nine newton meters finish them up spray them down 
with alcohol and clean off all the exposed grease. All right. Because grease on the outside is not your friend. Only on the inside. All right, now let's test them. To test them, not one fraction of a millimeter this thing doesn't budge, so we know we're good there. Question is, is it gonna go down at all? Actually, oh yeah, oh that's good pressure in there, man. There's real good pressure in there. Mm, so hard. Oh, shut up. There we go. Well, didn't get it all the way, but close. And pow. Let's do it again. Mm -hmm. Done. We are working. Oh, nearly had them all the way down, but didn't let go quick enough. But pow. She is working perfectly. Now there will be a lot of excess oil or grease. Clean all that stuff up. Ta-da! There you go, folks. A 2021 Fox Transfer Trapper Post. Not a hard job, way easier than pre-2021 models. Actually, it's basically the identical, it's identical job, really. Uh, it's just the parts and pieces used and the tools used previous to uh, 2021 uh, were ridiculous, especially take out the collar, man. I mean, that tool alone was like, pfft, I don't know, 400 something bucks, right? So uh, it's ridiculous. They shouldn't have done it like that. Personally, I, I, I can't stand this tool. I mean, this is just a dumb tool. Shouldn't have, they shouldn't have done that, but it is what it is. Can't do anything about it, all right? So you guys can do this job. It's not a hard job to do. It's just like any other hydraulic dropper post, right? Just empty it out, change the seals, set the IFP, bleed it, or bleed it, set the IFP, boom, done. Just like a shock. There's really no difference, guys. Once you get used to doing this type of work, you will be able to do it on your own whenever you need to. And not only save yourself money, but I mean, time. And well, time in a sense that you could get it done when you need it to get done at least with the newer Fox transfers, Fox at least took into consideration the average person to be able to service their post without spending an obscene amount of money on tools. All uh, right, so as always guys, if you like the video, please click the like button. Subscribe to see more videos, click the bell button, bing, 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 in order to get reminded when new videos come out, all right? And until then, hope all is well with everyone and we will see you soon. Take care, have a good one, bye.